today. October Noir is with us, and they join us live here on our big program. So, gentlemen, go ahead and give me a brief introduction on yourselves. Tell me a little bit about the band and, and everything. Well, I'm Doug. I'm a guitar player. No, Tom, I do nothing. <laughs> You've got you've got great long hair though, so so. Uh, <laughs> I've been told it's like a romance novel or something. Though. That's awesome. Like, that's uh, awesome. And and, and, <laughs> and 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 what's great is you've got the accent to go along with the uh, oh, okay. with, 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 with the deal, so it's even better. Uh, so tell me about <laughs> October Noir. How, how did how did this band get together as a group? So uh, I started working on building the studio around 2016, and by 2017, I think it, within seven months, I put out an album, and it, it was just kind of a test run to see what it would do, see if people would pick up on it, and uh, it did well, so I was like, all right, well, let's see what, what else happened. So by 2018, we ended up bringing in our first members, Troy and Jackie, um, and then Danny on the drums, and just started working towards getting shows and whatnot. Um, it's a small start. That's awesome. That's awesome. October Noir with us today. They join us live here on our big program, Coast to Coast at Border to Border on iHeartRadio. Also, the Sunday radio broadcast at 990 WBOB today. So, uh, for folks that have never heard of you guys or, or don't know too much about you, tell us a little bit about October Noir. So, we consider it, I guess, a goth. Uh, rock, metal, doom type of band. We, uh, yeah, it's it's more the if you, your fans of Typo Negative, you'll probably latch on pretty quickly to us. So that's awesome. It's kind of where, uh, yeah, everything was designated from. That's awesome. That's awesome. October Noir with us today. They join us live here in a program. So, uh, tell us about the latest uh, music release that you guys have. Oh yeah, so. We just released uh, Fate, Wine, and Wisteria back in two, uh, September 22nd. Yeah. So, yeah, the first day of the autumn solstice or whatever. Um, yeah, that was, uh, man, we worked on that for about two years. That was uh, very stressful. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it worked out. Yeah. It, was our, uh, it was our first album where we were really uh, collaborating on songwriting. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, this is my actual first foray into the genre, so that was really interesting for me to contribute to songwriting for stuff like that. Um, we got a lot of uh, pulls from uh, historical references in uh, the songwriting with this that you might not uh, usually see in a rock band. Uh, we actually have some interesting instruments that we've been using on that. We actually got a, a, a Guzheng on a, on one of our tracks That's that awesome. I, I learned to play for it. Yeah, it's like a Japanese, so, uh, like mandolin. It's, it's, I guess. A, <laughs> it's a Chinese zither. Oh, well, what, whatever that means. <laughs> a Chinese yeah, that's, zither. Uh, that's recording awesome. this album was an adventure. It's uh, it's definitely a de uh, departure from anything the band had beforehand. Yeah, yeah, to a degree, uh, we pulled a lot more elements from different styles and genres of music. I know we had some punk elements in one song and. Uh, Latest song uh, we had a music video for is heavily based off the of doo wop. Yeah, James from the forties and whatnot. And then uh, we did, awesome. did a lot of like Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin type of influence in, in a lot of the different songs too. So yeah, we just try to give it a big smorgasbord of rip off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's great. That's great. We have got <laughs> a uh, great guest with us today. October Noir join us here on our big program. And, uh, so tell us a little bit about some of your different goals as a, as a group and some of the different things that you guys, uh, are, are aspiring to. Honestly, man, we just, we just try to work to, to get it into the ears and the hands of, of more people. Um, it, you know, everything's buried by social media these days. And then the algorithms within that, it, it makes it really hard to, uh, to get it out there and even people just to click a link just to look at something you know it's it's just like pulling teeth yes. um so really just more exposure is good yeah um you know this is kind of an ongoing goal that i think pretty much any musician is going to vibe with um but like since i came into the band my primary role was developing all of the things that were not just the music um 
just a really impart, important part of, uh, you know, a, a entertainment service is building a lot of the spectacle. And uh, over the COVID times, I actually, uh, I, I built our light show system, our uh, silent stage rig, so that we can have complete control over our mix, uh, in-ear monitor system, uh, you know. And, uh, like, all of that, like, for the most part, those big projects are done, but you're always finding new things that you can use in order to develop your spectacle and, uh, you know, uh, develop the ways that you conduct your outreach and um, create um, create songs and videos that really touch people. Yeah, if anybody's trying to join a band, just just get out now. Just there's too much to it. Get out. <laughs> That's awesome. No, it's a lot of work. It's it's awesome. That's great. October Noir with us today. They join us live here on our big program. So, how do people connect with you guys on social media and the websites and everything? Yeah, so our main website is www.octobernoir.org. That's where we carry mainly just all, all of the merchandise that we have available. Um, and from everything else is Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we try to we try to keep it a little bit more compartmentalized than trying to grab onto every single social media platform. It's just too much to keep track of. Um, so we just kind of work off of what's best. I think Instagram becomes more like a... a <laughs> A palette of saving images, and then everything else is on Facebook. That's <laughs> Didi's realm. Yeah, shout out to Didi Cole, our photographer. That's awesome. That's fantastic. We have got October Noir with us today. They join us live here on our big program, and uh, these guys are uh, just making some amazing, amazing music. So we are going to play some of your music. Um, kind of talk to me a little bit about your uh, musical heroes and influences. You're going to be here all night with that one. <laughs> so uh, I'm very much a guitar player for the love of playing guitar. Uh, you know, I, I play to have fun at what I'm doing and really push myself technically. I'd say uh, some of my uh, some of my heroes are probably... Uh, Marco Svogli, uh, first and foremost, uh, just got an incredible sense of touch with his instrument. You can feel like everything he's playing is speaking words, just a, a truly expressive player. Um, and uh, yeah, and uh, of course, uh, you know, our namesake typo negative. Um, I, Really, it, it floors me what a strong cultural force they were and what they were doing, and it's been a it's a it's been amazing. Like uh, you know, growing up following what they've been doing with their music and the community that brought into it. Um, you know, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's it's it was just an amazing thing to really experience growing up and you know it's it's good to be uh paying tribute to that uh now which if we're talking about hero worship well i mean mine was all <laughs> well i came from 80s music um uh, i did a lot of involvement with uh def leppard and uh molly crew um a lot of the big hair metal bands but also some black metal that was kind of sprinkled in mm -hmm. from you know my childhood time but when I discovered Typo in 93, uh, that, that really clung to me. But I, I, and it was never anything that I, I really tried to, to do or try to mimic in that sense. Uh, it, it's when I started sitting down and writing that I would notice a lot of different influences in that coming out. So, it, I don't know, it just kind of fed into that. But um, it wasn't something I sat down and tried to learn. It was, I was always on top of complex material. Fantastic. Well, we are going to play some of your guys' music here. Tell me about uh, some some of the different uh, themes that you cover on this uh, on this new uh, Fate Wine and Wisteria disc. Uh, well, a lot of pain, a lot of hurt, uh, a lot of it's personal uh, experiences that uh, you know deal with love and loss and uh, just 
being an idiot, really. Uh, but then also, <laughs> like, Cradle the Monster, it'll go into dealing with cancel culture of today's world and the nature of it. Uh, so it, it was kind of attributed to, uh, like, being hunted down like the old classic monster films where, uh, you know, the mob went after Frankenstein and whatnot. That's um, awesome. Well, tell us, so, yeah, about, kind of old. Uh, tell us about Cradle the Monster. We are going to play that here in a few moments. Tell me about this. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, that's really what it kind of spawned from. It's funny, uh, some of the riffing towards the the, uh, the midsection there was actually almost a derivative of the Goosebumps theme song. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> that was awesome. the more punk influence song. And it, it, the punk sound came from trying to, you know, when you look at punk and how they were just against everything, you know, now the new punk is to, to wear a MAGA hat or something. So um, with the punk riff, I think, fit well in that, that atmosphere for it just to kind of be the pushback against cancel culture, against, uh, you know, people who just want to throw a label on everything. And then it's tossed around um, so frivolously that people, just, it loses its meaning, you know, it holds no weight anymore. But it, then it's like burn everybody down because you don't agree with them. Well, we you are going to do uh, this. Reminds me. Uh, yes, go ahead, man. Go, go, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut uh, you off. Go ahead. That uh, that reminds me of uh, like uh, when we were actually writing this song. There was a little thing we had kind of in jest. Um, there was a uh, keyboard part that was in a bridge section going before the uh, the reprisal of the uh, the main theme. We were actually using kind of uh, it was called the uh, India Ink um, synthesizer. It was like a a sitar like synth mm -hmm. sound that was really similar to like a uh, Super Mario or uh, Mario 64 like uh, <laughs> the uh, the Bowser theme from like World 2 That's you know awesome. Fire World That's great. I thought that was a really kind of tongue in cheek reference to like uh, being the villain. It didn't make it into the final cut of it but you know, that was a fond memory. Was yeah, messing around with that. Had a lot of stuff that we we chop and do something else with or pull from. It's just yeah, it's, it's very stressful. But that's awesome. Well, we are going to do this. We're going to place you guys on hold. We are going to play this track, and we'll be right back here on our big broadcast. It is October Noir. It is Cradle the Monster.
that is Cradle the Monster, and we are going to go back to October Noir here on our big broadcast. They join us coast to coast. And border to border, October Noir with us. That was Cradle the Monster, and they're back with us here on our big program. So, uh, what are you guys planning on doing uh, or, as far as touring, live performances, things like this? Uh, so, the next thing we got lined up is uh, West Virginia for New Year's. Um, we're going to be doing a show up there at the Dill Center in Parkersburg. Yeah, I believe. Wood uh, County. Yeah, so that's that should be a, bi- a big one. So we're trying to uh, get ready to start advertising for that around Ohio, uh, Pennsylvania, and the surrounding states and whatnot. So if you're listening and you live in that area, feel free to join us. Um, that's that's a big one for right now. We've we kind of sat back after this last album just to get a break in. Um, and yeah, so whatever comes our way, we'll, we'll focus on it then. That's awesome. That's awesome. We have got great guests with us today. They join us live here on our big broadcast. So you guys uh, are all over social media. Where do you get your most feedback from folks? Definitely Facebook. That uh, I think there's, it's a better way to reach people. Um, than Instagram, you know, you can throw out uh, images with some words on it, but it, it's just not a whole lot of motion in that that you can really work off of so yeah facebook's yeah. the main primary one that's yeah. awesome the really awesome thing about um the uh the facebook side of things is you know all the groups and everything where people come together for a uh, uh achieving a common goal you know it's been uh, we've been really trying to interact more as our brand in doing that and uh you know trying to foster good relationships between people that are also um, putting in the effort to try to make something of their careers. So that's, uh, that's been a really big goal of ours. And it's been, uh, it's been amazing what we've learned just from, uh, um, you know, engaging with uh, our fellow musicians. That's great. You know, I, I, I think that that is, I honestly think that's what social media was designed to do, <laughs> but I, I don't yeah, know if people you know, are actually using it for that purpose. Yeah, but they really have twisted it now. Like I so said, the algorithms are set up to where they really force you to spend money to get any kind yes. of reach anymore. Yes. Um, so, yeah, you got to buy your advertisements. Yeah. Set up, set up two sides of the coin. There's so many good things that Facebook could be, but it's not because it's, uh, it's an ad-based model. <laughs> what can you do? Just try to reach out to people anyways. So have you guys thought about doing music videos or anything like this? Or Oh, yeah, yeah. We've got several videos up now. We've got, uh, we got five. Yeah, and then we got oh. another one due out December 1st for uh, the Wicked Game cover uh, from Chris Isaac. So. Yeah, we did Effigy last, which was like the Halloween song, which was talking about the doo-wop 1940 style. Uh, we've got some other ones in the works right now. We're working on remastering the original album and including a brand new song with that so you know people don't feel cheaped out if they've already bought it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we just we stay busy, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys making time for us today. Thanks for coming on our program and chatting with us. This has definitely been... Very interesting, and I'm glad that you guys are uh, out there doing the damn thing. Thank you, guys. Thank you, man. Do what we can. Thank us. you. Appreciate it. Before we let you go, how do people buy your music and uh, get a hold of you guys online? So it's available on all the streaming platforms, which uh, if you use Spotify, um, you've got Apple, iTunes, Amazon, all your major ones. Um, and then for the physical copies of the CDs, that's when you got to go to www.octobernoir.org. That'll take you to T-shirts and whatever else we get up. Fantastic. Well, thanks, guys, and I will talk to you guys soon. Have yourself a wonderful day. Thank you, Gene. Thank you, gentlemen. There they go. That is October Noir. And uh, that's that. <laughs>